Okay, so what if I told you that some infinities are bigger than other infinities? Unless you've read The Fault in Our Stars by John Green, you might tell me I'm crazy. Actually, you might still tell me I'm crazy, but hear me out. First, let's talk about what infinity really is. If something is infinite, it's immeasurably great. It's unlimited, boundless. That seems really hard to even think about. <laughs> Do you have a headache yet? Good. That's because infinity seems like a really confusing abstract concept. And unsurprisingly, many mathematicians didn't even want to deal with it. But Georg Cantor braved the confusion and published the first proof of the existence of infinity in 1874. Not only did he publish proof of infinity, he also published proof that some infinites are larger than other infinites. Overachiever. But to understand that, let's start with set theory. Set theory is actually really simple, and it's just that numbers can be grouped into sets. Actually, anything can be grouped into sets. So the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on are one set of whole numbers. And the numbers 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and so on are a set of even whole numbers. A, B, C, D, E is a set of letters. And this is a set of books. It seems really simple, right? And that's because it is. So what happens if I want to compare the sets? Clearly, the fault in our stars isn't the same thing as the number 2. But it doesn't matter what they are. They're the same quantity. 2 is one number, and the fault in our stars is one book. So we can't look at what they are, but we can see how many of them there are. Obviously, we can conclude that the set of books and this set of numbers are equal in size. Okay, but what if you didn't know about numbers, or books, or counting? This is a weird concept, but stick with me here. What if I gave you this? You can still compare these sets, right? Just draw a line between each symbol, match them up. This set is equal, because everything has one match. But this set isn't. This poor lonely symbol doesn't have anything to match up with. This is called one-to-one -one correspondence, and we can compare any sets without counting. So the same concept should work with infinity, right? We just pretended that we couldn't count up to five, but we really can't count infinity. And set theory will still work. We know infinity exists, and we know what set theory is. But how does this prove that there are multiple infinities? How does it show that some are bigger than others? Cantor basically just drew some lines and showed that there are more numbers between 0 and 1 than there are in the infinite set of integers 1, 2, 3, and so on. Therefore, some infinities are bigger than other infinities. Making sense? No? Look at it this way. Here's why. Let's draw some more lines. Start with 1. Then draw a line to some decimal between 0 and 1. Write down 2. Draw a line to another decimal between 0 and 1. Continue this with 3 and 4. If you want, you can even do it with 5. Do you see it yet? It doesn't matter what decimal you draw a line to because there will always be more numbers between 0 and 1 than there are integers. If I circle these digits, I could still write down a number that is completely different from all of them. We can keep creating new numbers in this way, but there are no more integers to pair them up with. There will never be enough pairs. Therefore, the infinite set of numbers between 0 and 1 has more real numbers than the infinite set of whole numbers. Pretty cool, right? So, multiple infinities exist, and some are larger than others. How much does your brain hurt now? I love this concept, and I think Cantor deserves some serious admiration. Studying infinity was frowned upon when he did it, and his work was even called a disease by fellow mathematicians. He was professionally attacked, but his works have proven to be an integral part of mathematics. So thanks, Gayo Cantor, for facing adversity and bringing us this mind-blowing concept. I'm infinitely grateful.